You're tuned to Once Upon a Fairy Tale. Welcome to episode 4 of Once Upon a Fairy Tale. I can't believe we're on episode 4 already. Thank you so much for all your support on the Facebook page as well as iTunes and SoundCloud and for your support of my new identity, Disney Dwayne, on YouTube as well as on Twitter. The numbers are growing slowly but steadily and even if it's the few of you, I will still keep doing this because this is a project of love. Okay, in this podcast, we'll be talking about Shanghai Disneyland that's coming our way pretty soon, upcoming products, as well as reviews of some of the stuff I've watched on TV, and my Disney Infinity 3 toy box creation. But first up, Shanghai Disneyland. The upcoming Disneyland in Shanghai will be a new variation of the traditional Disneyland theme park. It is set to open in spring of 2016. Currently, there are five Disneyland theme parks in the world. They are in Los Angeles and Florida in the US, Tokyo, Japan, Paris, France, and Hong Kong, China. Aside from the Disneyland parks itself, there are other Disney parks like Tokyo Disney Seas, Disney's California Adventure, Disney's Hollywood Studios, Animal Kingdom, and Epcot. Just looking specifically at the Disneyland parks themselves, Hong Kong comes closest to being the most different so far with its unique Toy Story Land and Mystic Point. However, Shanghai Disneyland looks set to take over with even more unique features which we will talk about in a bit. Going back to the five parks, the other smaller interesting differences I noticed from laying all the five Disneyland park maps on my room floor was that in Japan, Frontierland is called Westernland, and in France, Tomorrowland is called Discoveryland. I know for France the name is different because of a conceptual difference. Interesting, right? Now, what to expect from Shanghai Disneyland? There will be two hotels in the area. The Shanghai Disneyland Hotel with 420 rooms and the Toy Story Hotel with 800 rooms, that being the budget hotel. These of course will be outside of the park. Also outside, before the entrance to the park, you'll step into Disney Town. This is Shanghai's version of Downtown Disney, which incidentally has been renamed in Florida to Disney Springs. The one in California retains its name, now being the only Downtown Disney in the world. The version in Paris is called Disney Village. Enough sidetracking. So in Disney Town, there will be a new 1,200-seat Broadway-style theater called the Walt Disney Grand Theater. The world's first production of The Lion King in Mandarin will premiere here. Shanghai Disney Resort has engaged United Asia Live Entertainment to support the casting efforts with a focus on recruiting and developing local talent. The area of Disney Town outside the park is projected to be about 46,000 square meters in the initial phase, but Disney Town continues inside the park too. Once you enter through the turnstiles, don't expect Main Street USA. That's gone. Instead, you'll be on Mickey Avenue for more shopping. The usual tenants like World of Disney Store and Lego will be there, but Disney Town will also feature some unique tenants that are familiar names in the Chinese market. The concept is Main Street meets Toontown and then splash it all with a huge Mickey theme. The hub for Shanghai Disneyland will be a new concept of gardens. Called the Gardens of Imagination, it will house seven Chinese themed gardens named Melody Garden, Romance Garden, Woodland Garden, Garden of the Magic Feather, Fantasia Garden, Storybook Castle Garden, and Garden of Twelve Friends. The gardens will host Mickey's Storybook Express. It's a parade with the longest route of any Disney parade so far. Walt Disney love trains and this parade is not short on them. Leading the parade will be a whimsical locomotive followed by a line of themed train cars. Of course, new music and a colorful cast of performers are expected. Let's not forget the nighttime spectacular. It will take place at the Enchanted Storybook Castle, which is located right in front of the Storybook Castle Garden. Called Ignite the Dream, it features projections, laser, and fireworks, bringing audiences through another original show at Disney's largest castle yet. Standing at 196 feet, this will be the most interactive castle Disney has built to date. Aside from a Tangled and Pinocchio-themed restaurant and a Cinderella-themed boutique, there are two attractions at this castle. The Once Upon a Time Adventure is a walkthrough which follows Snow White's story, and Voyage to the Crystal Grotto, which launches from Fantasyland, is a boat ride under the castle that promises breathtaking sights. Now another garden I want to talk about is the Garden of Twelve Friends. 
which features each of the 12 animals from the Chinese zodiac, represented by Disney and Pixar characters. Now let's let's try something really different here and have some fun. I want you to guess which 12 Disney characters would represent these 12 animals, okay? So here we go. The rat, the ox, the tiger, the rabbit, the dragon, the snake, the horse, the sheep, the monkey, the rooster, the dog, and the pig. Now, you can pause this podcast, go back a little bit to repeat the animals, and then write them down and make your guesses before you continue with the answers, okay? Remember, these are characters that are only from Disney or Pixar films. So if you're going to play this game for real, you have to pause right now because here come the answers. Are you ready? Number one, we have the rat. And it's Remy from Pixar's Ratatouille. Number two is the ox. Now, this is a hard one. It's Babe the Blue Ox from the short film Paul Bunyan. Number three is a favorite, the tiger. Come on. Yes, you must have guessed this. Tigger from Winnie the Pooh. Number four, the rabbit. Thumper from Bambi. Number five, the dragon. Is it Maleficent or Mushu? It's Mushu from Mulan. Number six, we have the snake. It's Ka from the Jungle Book, of course. And number seven, we have many, many horses, but who made it? My guess was Maximus from Tangled, and I was right. Number eight, we have the sheep. Jolly Holiday Lambs from Mary Poppins. Number nine, the monkey is Abu from Aladdin. Number ten, the rooster is Alain Adele from Robin Hood. Why did I go French suddenly? It's Alan Adele from Robin Hood. Number 11, the dog is Pluto. And at number 12, finally, we have the pig. And it's from the Toy Story film. Yes, Ham the Pig. All right, I hope you had fun with that. Do leave your comments on our Facebook page or YouTube channel and tell us how you fared. Our Facebook page is at www.facebook.com slash onceuponafairytaletime. From there, you can also click on a link to our YouTube channel. You can also find podcast notes, which provide links to more information and videos on what we covered here. Back to more Shanghai Disneyland news. Even though Storybook Castle Garden is in front of the castle, I believe the castle is part of Fantasyland itself. In addition to the familiar Peter Pan's Flight and Seven Dwarfs Mine Train, there is going to be a new maze attraction in Fantasyland based on Tim Burton's Alice in Wonderland. There's also going to be a honeypot spin ride themed to the many adventures of Winnie the Pooh. There is yet another brand new land to the Disney Park franchise. Treasure Cove is a pirate land exclusively themed to the Pirates of the Caribbean movies. Battle of the Sunken Treasure is a new ride in that land that employs projection mapping technology. Guests will encounter pirates, mermaids, and even a kraken as their magnetically propelled boats spin, travel sideways, and move backwards. There's another ride called Explorer Canoes. I'm guessing it's not as exciting because there's not much information available on it. In any case, Treasure Cove also has a new show called Eye of the Storm, Captain Jack's Stunt Spectacular at the El Teatro Fandango. Here's another name change to a land. Adventureland is known as Adventure Isle in Shanghai Disneyland. I'll review three main attractions here. Roaring Rapids is a round raft ride propelled only by gravity and water as guests plunge down mountains and into a dark cavern where they will meet a race of giant reptiles that kind of look like alligators standing on two feet. Apparently, this is a nod to China's fascination with dinosaurs. I personally think they should have made a ride based on Pixar's The Good Dinosaur. What do you guys think? Also, there's a section of the ride where you get to see other guests attempt a ropes course above you. This must be part of the Camp Discovery attraction. I'm a little bit intrigued that the ropes course is above the ride. What if loose items drop from their pockets as they climb? I'm sure Disney's going to make sure that there are nets and that they're not going to allow people in dresses to climb and stuff like that. But guys, really, if you're going to do that ropes course, just make sure you wear some underwear, okay? The third attraction in Adventure Isle I want to share with you is Soarin' Over the Horizon. This is obviously not an original attraction, but it will feature some sites specific to China, like the Great Wall. Oh, and last but not least, I lied, there's a fourth attraction, which is an original production at the Story House stage called Tarzan Call of the Jungle. 
Featuring the score from the animated feature, it's a high-energy musical retelling of the classic tale. It's said to have a fusion of theatrics, Chinese acrobatics, and a rock concert. I'm interested to see how different this one is from the short-lived version called Tarzan Rocks at Animal Kingdom in Florida before the Finding Nemo musical took over. Okay, one last land to cover. Let's hop over to Tomorrowland. Here, instead of Space Mountain, we get the Tron Light Cycles Power Run. There's a concept video and the link can be found in the podcast notes. We also have the Buzz Lightyear Planet Rescue. Unlike Buzz Lightyear's Space Ranger Spin, this attraction has a new storyline combined with a new interactive targeting system in a new vehicle called Space Cruisers. Another attraction called Jet Packs will allow guests to control how high they fly as their legs dangle. Watch out for faster spinning as the ride progresses. Star Wars fans, it seems like the only Star Wars attraction here would be the Star Wars Launch Bay, which really is just exhibits, merchandise, and meet and greets. However, that doesn't change the fact that two themed Star Wars lands are opening up in Disneyland California and Hollywood Studios in Florida. Star Tours will add new adventures from the upcoming movie The Force Awakens. Space Mountain will be reimagined temporarily to Hyperspace Mountain, which simulates an X-Wing starfighter battle. And in the new Star Wars land, there'll be an attraction which allows guests to ride and control the Millennium Falcon. All these exciting things to look forward to on the Disney theme parks front. All this information compiled specially for you on Once Upon a Fairy Tale, the podcast. On to upcoming Disney products. The Aladdin Diamond Edition comes out October 13th this year. The Walt Disney Diamond Editions are a line of selected Disney movies released out of their vault on DVD and Blu-ray. This edition features a never-before-heard cut song of Jafar's called My Finest Hour, as well as extended outtakes from recording sessions of Robin Williams as the genie. In my opinion, the packaging is not as pretty as the Platinum series, and Aladdin and Jasmine's character design still look a little bit off, but this edition would still be a true diamond in the rough for any Disney collector. There's also a new Once Upon a Time companion novel to the series called Red's Untold Tale. It flashes back to when she was 13 and received her cloak, and also how she was plagued with nightmares she didn't understand. Once Upon a Time fans will recognize them as her wolf sight coming out. This book has just been released on hardcover, and the ebook version is also available. Kingdom Heart fans, there is still no release date for Kingdom Hearts 3. The latest speculation is January 2017. However, Kingdom Hearts 2.8 has been announced for a release later this year. Fingers crossed. This game is a remastered collection of the Kingdom Hearts series, which includes Kingdom Hearts 3D, Dream Drop Distance, as well as two new pieces of content, namely Kingdom Hearts X Back Cover and Kingdom Hearts 0.2 Birth by Sleep, a fragmentary passage. More gaming news, Disney Infinity's Force Awakens playset will be released December 18th, the same as the movie. More Disney Infinity news later in the podcast as I introduce to you my very first toy box game that I created. For now, we'll review some of the shows that have just hit our screens. I highly recommend the documentary by PBS called American Experience Walt Disney. It's now available on DVD. This four-hour program chronicles the ups and downs of the man himself. PBS does an objective journey featuring Disney's hurdles in starting up his company, his staff going on strike, competition in the business, the significance of his first film Snow White, more about his family life, and his creation of Disneyland. Love him or not, Walt Disney has a great influence on us till today. I also caught the Descendants Wicked World series. I didn't think it would be as short as two minutes per episode, so it's hard to decide what I think about it. The animation is not bad, but I really go for storyline, and in this case, it's mainly situational, so it's not one of my favorites. This might be a test for a real animated series. It did premiere to 2.3 million views, so I'm sure something will come out of that. What I was really excited about was the Muppets series. It really wasn't the Muppets as I or we know them, so in order for it to work in my head, I really had to think of it as the Muppets in an alternate reality. I like the humor and backstage entourage feel of the show, and I'm looking forward to seeing where this goes. 
I also liked the first episode of the Guardians of the Galaxy series on Disney XD. Very adult, it doesn't play down to the kids even though it's a cartoon. Great humor here as well. I also like that it continues off where the movie left off. Big bonus points for continuing to integrate music from the 70s and having a slowly emerging plot point relating to Quill and his heritage. Again, I'm excited to see how this series develops. Definitely recommend it, especially since the Star Wars Clone Wars series has wrapped after six seasons. And finally, the much-awaited Once Upon a Time Season 5. I sometimes feel that Once Upon a Time can get trashy like a soap, but their comeback in the first episode was really strong this time. No cheap plot devices and good linear character motivations. I hope this stays for the rest of the season. And that's all for reviews. I'm still excitedly anticipating Riley's first date, the Inside Out short coming out with the release of the movie on DVD. I'm also waiting for the premiere of the new Lion King movie on Disney Junior called The Lion Guard, the new Tangled musical on the Disney Magic Ship, as well as Pixar's The Good Dinosaur, all coming this November. And last but not least, Episode 7 of Star Wars. All these reviews coming in a future podcast next year. If you haven't listened to our first episode, that features all the upcoming Disney movies till 2019. Check it out. We'll wrap up with a quick review of Disney Infinity 3 and a fun introduction to the toy box game that I created if you'll stick around. I've played two playsets so far. The Inside Out one is a platform playset, which means it plays like Super Mario where the camera allows a 2D or sometimes 2.5 dimensional view. I expected more storyline from this playset, because this game takes place after the events in the movie. I was hoping players would get to explore the newly upgraded controls for Riley. Unfortunately, I'm not sure that's going to happen in this playset. In any case, I'm very excited for the Twilight of the Republic playset. The combat controls are infinitely, haha <laughs> pun intended, better, and it was really exciting to be able to explore so many different combinations of combat moves. Well done Disney Infinity team! The artwork and pacing of the game so far has also been very engaging. I have to say, I can't wait to explore the upcoming Force Awakens, Toy Box Takeover, and Toy Box Speedway games. Here's something interesting as well. I noticed while walking around the Toy Box hub that there are two unnamed sections of possible playsets to come. So here's hoping that there are really more playsets before Disney Infinity 4 hits us. Who knows, right? The last thing on my list for this episode is the toy box that I made for Disney Infinity 3's first toy box challenge. I've seen the standard of toy boxes created by players, and I'm sure I've barely scratched the surface programming this. Just like theme parks, games explore stepping into another world. So let me introduce you to the world that I created in the game Vanellope Plays. Your character starts in Theater Town at the top of Theater Tower, where you meet our featured character for my Plays Toy Box series. So in our first episode, Vanellope Von Schweetz from Wreck-It Ralph directs you. If you haven't guessed already, you're here as an actor to do what actors do best, act. I play on the double meaning of words here because each play you act in is also you playing the game, and each stage you perform on is also a stage or level of your adventure. And just like theater, everything is happening live. When you start, Vanellope simply tells you that you need to complete two stages before she will let you perform in the finale. In the same theater tower building, you must find Elsa from Frozen and Anger from Inside Out. Marked out by huge blue exclamation marks, they're not hard to find. Elsa is in the shade on the second level, and Anger is between two Anger-like looking totems on the first level. You can do these stages in any order. With Elsa, she will point you to Anna, whom you will need to take out of the sun, and into a cool chamber hidden in a sewer maze. The entrance to the sewer is not hard to find either. Once you cross the San Francisco Bridge leading to Green Park, you'll see a little hole in the ground to your left, right before Pride Rock. The Inside Out stage will require you to help Joy collect Joy Memory Orbs that have spilled from Inside Out of Riley in the Jump for Joy challenge. The finale stage is a sugar rush race to collect cherry bombs for Vanellope. So the amazing thing about Disney Infinity is that it combines many Disney worlds into one. The creation possibilities are just endless. That's basically an introduction to my first toy box creation ever. If you want to find out more, I've included a lot more notes as well as hints in the podcast notes for episode 4 on our Facebook page. If you'd like to play this toy box, I believe you must also have a Wii U to add me as a friend. In any case, my username is DisneyLad on my Wii U as well as Disney accounts. 
Thanks so much for listening to episode 4 of Once Upon a Fairy Tale, the podcast. If you like us, don't forget to subscribe on iTunes, SoundCloud, or YouTube. Like our Facebook page, as well as follow me on Twitter at Disney Dwayne. Till the next one, see ya!